Hi, it's Cheryl with Caribou Country Lifestyle. So, <clears throat> we just got back from our camping trip. It was absolutely wonderful. The weather was hot, mid 30s Celsius. We went to Enderby, BC, and we float the river there. Last year we went there and we couldn't float, but this year it was good, so we floated a couple of times. We went on a friend's boat out on Merrill Lake on the Shoe Swap in British Columbia as well. We don't go too far, and uh, so we had our girl here that we had hired to look after the animals and to water and pick whatever was available to pick while we were gone. But I see here that my peas are pretty much done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these pea plants out and I'm going to give them to the pigs. And I'm just going to be cutting them at the base. I'm not going to be pulling them right out of the ground. I'm going to leave those roots in the ground so they can decompose. And that just adds more nutrients into the soil. Because in behind here, I have my pole beans that are growing and then they're going to be climbing up this panel. So let's get started and we'll just uh, cut these peas out. And my chickens are going to love this. So I just brought my wheelbarrow over and throw everything in here. I might give some to the pigs too, but mostly it's going to the chickens. Anything that, uh, any peas that I have found on here are usually too big and they don't taste very good when they get that big. I'm just gonna gently tug these out. Make sure that they're not connected to my bean plants. I don't wanna rip them out of the ground. And then I'll show you my bean plants after I get all of these out. I tried picking some of the peas, but they're just too big. Uh, the girl that I had hired, I'm hoping she got lots. Because I picked quite a few before we left. And this one here, this is the Little Crunch peas and it's just a smaller version of a pole pea and they worked out pretty good but I do have my pole peas over on this panel over here almost got these out oh my beans I want them to connect onto this panel here so I'm just going to help them help them along so they have something to cling to. I don't want them to uh, hang on to this panel because once I cut these out I'm taking this white panel down because it has served its purpose. I have a pea growing way down here, right along the bottom. It's funny. Okay. And what those nutrients are that are going to be going back down into the soil is your nitrogen nutrients. So, okay, let's take a closer look at, I'm gonna take these panels out too. I just store these in my garden shed. Year after year, I've had these, oh my gosh, for probably 15 years, at least 15 years I've had these and I just uh, store them and put them back in to where they were. Found another little pea in here. 
Got a pretty good view of my kohlrabi too. Let's take a look. So there we have my beans growing in behind my peas. Got my peas out now and my beans are climbing up this panel. And as you can see, I've got some pretty nice kohlrabi in behind there. I'm going to have to pick that out too. And we'll have to be eating that too. But that's okay. That's what it's all about. I'm going to move my lady over here. Maybe I'll move her to over here. I just need her out of the way. This is my butter crunch lettuce. And it needs to be picked. And when I pick it, I just usually pick the outer leaves and I just snap them off like, look at that, that's just beautiful, beautiful lettuce. And when I snap the outer leaves, oh, I've got a ugly looking bug, I'm going to go give this, do you see that? Ugly looking bug, give that to the chickens. This is so funny. I throw it in to the chickens. The one chicken looks at it and the other chicken's like, I'll get it. If you're not going to eat it, I'll get it. So yeah, the other chicken missed out. Got to get it when the getting's good. So I have lots of lettuce. And so I have, this is the butter crunch lettuce. And then over on the other side, I have a um, gourmet mix of lettuce. I'm just going to also, I have a few little seedlings of lettuce. I'm just going to pick these out because it's planted quite close together. And I just want to give these other. So if I find that they're planted close together, I'm going to take them out, but I will break off these top leaves so that we can enjoy that. And I should have brought this wheel back. Okay. Yeah, so this probably needed to be picked earlier. But, like I say, we've been gone for a few days. So, I'm getting to it now. And I have uh, my sister-in-law and a friend of mine. If I have an overabundance of vegetables, a lot of times I just uh, will wash it up and give them a bag of lettuce. And they absolutely love that. I mean, what's not to love about free lettuce? Fresh picked. Okay. Um, those aren't too close together. So... But I am going to take this one out in between. And then I'm just going to pull the tops off. Put, throw that in there. The chickens aren't fussy. If they'll eat bugs, they'll eat the bottom stems of the lettuce too. And then once I pick this, I noticed I have uh, a few cucumbers. They're about, oh, I would say about four inches long. It's not quite ready to be picked, but they are getting there. I have another big couple of lettuce leaves over here. Uh, we are going to be eating quite a bit of lettuce here, but that's okay. I love lettuce. I have a gourmet mix. I see some something's been in here. When I pick this lettuce, look at that pathetic looking lettuce. Something's been in here and ravishing on my lettuce. So let's get some of this picked so we can enjoy it too. That can go to the chickens. But that's a nice looking. See I've got this is a cutworm. That's gotten in here. That's the culprit. But I'll just pick what I can. I've got a few different types in this gourmet mix. This looks kind of like a romaine. 
and then a green leaf, maybe kind of like an iceberg lettuce leaf. And I'll just pick whatever's good and get rid of whatever's not. Give those that to the chickens. This was looking really nice before we left. Oh, there's another cutworm. I'll just pull them out as I come to them and I'll feed those to the chickens too. I'll come through here with some demiotaceous earth and uh, sprinkle that on. And with the demiotaceous earth, you it's something that you have to uh, reapply, especially if it rains after you've applied it because the rain will just wash it away. So, uh, you know, you could uh, reapply it every couple of days and that would be totally fine. It doesn't affect the taste of the lettuce at all. And, uh, I mean, you're going to wash your lettuce anyways. And um, you'll just rinse all of that right off. So, I'm getting a little bit, but not a lot. These uh, worms have really done a number on this. But, I mean, that's, that's just as much my fault. Do you see the little pollinator in there going around to all the flowers? So this is the borage and uh, that's exactly what I want is for that little bee to come along and pollinate and then go around to all the different other flowers, whether it's um, the tomatoes or the peppers and it can just go around and pollinate. So this is all the barrage. There's the nasturtiums flowering and then over on this side right here this is the Tulsi and it's starting to flower as well. And you can make a tea from that. That's the holy basil, the Tulsi. And it's, oh my gosh, I just touched those flowers. And that smell is just absolutely wonderful. I'm looking at these cherries and I hope I brought a big enough bowl to pick them all. I gotta get these picked. Um, these look really nice these sour cherries and even if I don't get to doing anything with them today I can always clean them up pit them and then what I do is I'll put them in the freezer and um, pull them out on a day that I can well, see that one's no good Oh, these look beautiful. And this sour cherry tree, this is an Evans sour cherry tree. And you do not need two for them to produce fruit. This is a self-fertile type of uh, cherry tree. Oh my gosh, it's just loaded. And you only need you only need one <laughs> look at that it's a small bowl but that's more than what I got last year so uh, I'm okay with that let's go pick my raspberries <laughs> so here are my raspberries and they are loaded with berries and so I'm just gonna pick them as they are ripe and you can tell when a uh, raspberry is ripe if it pulls off fairly easy then you know it's ready but if it you have a hard time trying to get it off then just leave it and wait a day or two and then they'll be definitely ready see I've only got a few that are ready and so I just have to kind of just give them a little pull and see if they're ready Gotta look 
underneath the plants because you never know where they're going to be or which ones are underneath and they might be ripe. I've been waiting. I didn't get anywhere near this amount last year. So this last year was the first full year that these were in this spot. And so I only got the odd one here and there as far as, and I just, we just ate them. Whereas this, I can uh, take these and either, like I say, I could make something with them right away or with raspberries. It's, if you're going to put them in the freezer, it's best to bring them in, lay them out on a cookie sheet, pick through, pick out the bad ones, and then just put them in the freezer on the cookie sheet. Once they're frozen, put them in the freezer bag and then you can process them later at another time. That's better for you. So. Any in the front? No. So I'm not sure what type of raspberries these are because I got 18 plants. Uh, raspberry plants from my sister three years ago and then I also bought 10 plants and I knew those were the heritage I just like to wait for the vehicles to go by because it's kind of hard to hear me when I'm editing these videos I see one over here I uh, Notice that I don't wait sometimes for the vehicles to go by and then you can barely hear what I'm saying. So that is it. And like I say, I'm not exactly sure what brand my sister had. She doesn't know because she actually uh, lives on a farm with her husband and it, those raspberries that were there, they've been there forever. And she, when she moved there, those raspberries were there. And so she's not sure what variety of raspberries they are. I see a squirrel up in the tree behind my camera. There's a Saskatoon tree there and he's eating the Saskatoons off of the tree. It's kind of funny. So this is what I got for today. And this is really my first pick of the raspberries. So that's, I don't know, I think that's pretty darn good for my first pick for the first pick of the season. I'm going to go back over to the other side of the garden and I am going to pick some kale so I can have kale in my scrambled eggs. Where I have my dwarf curled kale and I have a quite a few little ones here that are ready to be picked. I'm going to pick these and it's going to be awesome. You can make uh, like I say, I put this in my eggs, scrambled eggs, or I'll put spinach in it. You can use it for a salad. You could saute it and just have it with some butter and garlic and salt and pepper. That would be amazing too. But I think most of this is going to be going in my scrambled eggs. So I brought this basket. I had this basket out here. And I don't know if I just forgot what I had the basket out here for. And I took it back into the house and put it away thinking, oh, I didn't need as much stuff as I thought I was going to need. But oh no, I needed it. I just forgot what I needed it for. Picking the kale. So my friend was saying that, uh, her husband has decided he likes kale again. He goes through these moments where he doesn't, he likes kale and then he doesn't like kale. And I guess now he likes kale. So that's good because she has a beautiful kale plant growing in a pot at her house. And she gave me a little bit of it because she had, hers was ready and mine wasn't. So she gave me some of hers and I had that with scrambled eggs. And I enjoyed it immensely. 
So I think that's all I'm going to pick for today. Not a whole lot. I've got a few of the dinosaur kale. A few of those. I'll pick some of that. And I can chop that up and put that in my eggs as well. There's not as many that are ready. Got a few. So I've got here in my sink, I've got all the different mixes of lettuce and I've just added a bunch of cold water and I'm just pushing down on the lettuce just to kind of loosen off and dislodge any dirt that might be stuck to it. And then I'm just taking out and I'll kind of look at the leaf and I'm going to stick it in my salad spinner. Whatever I don't like, I'm just picking off and I'm dumping it into a bucket down here because I have a bucket down here and that's what I give to my pigs. So I have some old romaine that I had and it was all chopped up and I forgot it in the fridge. And then we left and it ended up, you know how lettuce starts turning yellow? Well, it did that. So I'm just going to break this off at the end. And that one is no good. I just like to look over it and I stick it in my salad spinner. And then I'm just going to spin out that excess water off of the leaves. I see uh, some people that, like people that have market gardens and they're selling their lettuce, they'll put it in a great big, it's almost like um, a big wash tub and they put it on the spin cycle and it spins all that excess water off of the leaves. Well that's kind of like my uh, lettuce salad spinner here. Same idea just on a way smaller scale. And I have romaine in here, the gourmet mix, which is all different types of lettuce. I have the butter crunch, lots of really nice big leaves of the butter crunch. And I don't know all the blends of lettuce that were in that gourmet mix. I know that looked like there were some romaine pieces in there maybe some arugula. I'm not exactly sure. Look like some types of little iceberg looking lettuce leaves. But uh, I got quite a bit here. So I think I'll give this one a spin and get all the water out of it. So I purchased these bags from our wholesale store. You can buy commercial plastic bags. And I buy these just for this reason. So that I can stick in my washed lettuce. And then I just put it in my crisper and I have all this fresh green lettuce right at my fingertips. Wash the last of my lettuce leaves I'm just spinning this last little bit. I found two more cutworms in with in the water, so they went down the drain. And then I'll add these lettuce. Oh, I think I should spin this a little more. Oh, that's better. Just didn't spin it quite enough. It still seemed kind of saturated with water. It's funny how when you put lettuce leaves in the water, they kind of 
get feel like slimy and limp. But then after you've washed them and you've spun them and you put them in the bag, they crisp up quite quite nicely. So I'm gonna try and I think I can fit all of this in here. And then I'll just put this in my crisper and it'll be ready for any future salads or maybe some hamburgers. You never know what is on the menu. Okay, next I'll get put this in my crisper. When we went camping, I took almost every vegetable that was in my crisper and I put it in the trailer to take with us. And I told my husband that I have, we are gonna be eating a lot of vegetables. I brought vegetables and we're eating vegetables, I tell ya. So I made veggies and dip and I did, uh, I took my baby bok choy with me, which he had no idea that I had even brought it. And I did pork chops one night while we were camping on the barbecue. He was cooking the pork chops and I was inside the trailer. And uh, oh, and we also had some hash brown potatoes that I had put in foil and he was cooking that up with onions and garlic and all that goodness, salt and pepper. So he was cooking that up on the barbecue, and when he was almost finished, then I sauteed the baby bok choy, and I forgot my uh, sesame oil at home, but I had regular oil, and um, I just used a little bit of some olive oil with some fresh ginger, fresh garlic, and, um, Soy sauce, that's what I'm trying to think of. Gosh, I couldn't think of soy sauce for the life of me. And he, he was like so shocked that I had uh, brought the baby bok choy. I said, well, I picked it and it needed to be eaten. So guess what? We're the ones eating it. And with this kale, I'm just gonna pick the ends off at the base and because I would be cutting them off anyways I'll give those ends to the pigs and I am just going to spin the rest like the good tops on it and then that way I don't have all these tops and it doesn't take up as much room in my uh, salad spinner so I'm just going to rip these bottoms off I know people make uh, kale chips and I've thought about making kale chips, but I just haven't found the time to do much of anything. We have been so busy. If it we're not in the garden, then we're just busy doing so many other things around the yard as well. So with the sour cherries, all I've done is I've got a colander down here and I'm just going to get a little bowl. And that's going to be for the pits. And I'm just taking my cherry pitter. And what it does is it pushes the pit out. Well, these cherries are really small. And it sometimes pushes the pit out. But, just a sec. My sister got me this cherry pitter. Let's see how this works. So, you have six cherries and you push on that. Is there six? Oh my goodness. The pits are down below and the cherries are on the top. And I just, 
have to pick out the cherries. Oh my gosh! This is genius! So this is just made by Starfrit, which is, you could buy at any of your local, your Walmart, uh, Marshall, Zellers, I don't even think we have a Zellers anymore. Look at that. Ha! That's genius! Oh, that pit hung on. Didn't want to let go. But that's okay. It did let go. So I'm just grabbing the ones that don't have stems on them right now. And do them first. This is going to be a game changer. I'll boop. No, it got it out. I thought it didn't get it out at first. It got it. Oh, that one wanted to hang on. So I'm going to finish these. But Oh my gosh, this is amazing. I love this. I love this invention. So I just want to give a big shout out, thanks to my sister Sandy. She is the one that bought me this cherry pitter and uh, it works pretty lickety split. I have a single cherry pitter here and it doesn't even compare to this Starfrit cherry pitter that she got me. It's absolutely amazing. I've done all my cherries. I'm just going to give them a quick rinse. And then uh, I will let them drain. My water pressure isn't very good because I'm also doing my laundry as well. So here with the uh, raspberries, I'm going to grab a pan. And I'm just going to spread these all out. I just want a single layer and then I'm going to pick out any of the ones that I don't like. Any of the ones that are ugly, that I don't want to be having them in a recipe, they don't look very good. I will pick those ones out. Okay, so I picked out three that I don't really like the looks of. And then so after I've spread them out onto my pan, then I'm going to put them in my freezer, let them freeze, and then I'll dump them into um, a freezer bag as well. So I'm going to go put these into the freezer. I'm going to write sour cherries. Twenty twenty three. I already know I have two bags of sour cherries in my freezer. So I'm just gonna kinda make sure that they've drained enough. And we'll just um, you know what? I have this other handy little gadget and I always forget about it. does is I can lift these sides up and it holds I'll lift this side up not too much and it holds my bag open so that I can dump it in here without too much of a mess I did lose one I don't want to step on it I'm going to run this under the water. But a friend of mine gave me this little gadget too. And I just like, okay, that's a great idea. And then these 
is just fold down and it fits back into your drawer. Wipe up my mess. Take the air out of my bag and seal that up so that like I say, this bit here, that's not enough to make up a batch of jam, but with what I have in my freezer already, that will definitely add to it. Figure out what I'm going to do for the rest of the day. I got a bunch of laundry that needs to be done. I probably have some grocery shopping that I need to do as well. It's uh, The list is never ending. So thanks for joining me and I hope you have a great rest of your day and we'll talk again soon. Bye for now.